हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर अभिनव गुप्ता मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर मकीनो इंटरनेशनल हेल्थ केयर प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वी हैव सेंटर्स थ्रू आउट इंडिया टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट ट्रोमेटिक ब्रेन इंजरी इट इज द मोस्ट चैलेंजिंग कंडीशन फॉर अ थेरेपिस्ट और अ क्लिनिशियन सो वेयर वी कैन फाइंड अ पेशेंट विथ टी बी आई वी कैन फाइंड अ पेशेंट विथ टी बी आई इन रिहेब सेंटर्स इन कम्युनिटी प्रोग्राम्स इन ओ पी डीज इन वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स एंड द कॉमन कॉजेज ऑफ टी बी आई इंक्लूड्स आर टी ए मोटर व्हीकल एक्सीडेंट्स फॉल्स वायलेंस और स्पोर्ट्स और रिक्रिएशनल एक्सीडेंट्स नाउ कमिंग अप टू द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ टी बी आई बेसिकली क्लासिफिकेशन विल स्टार्ट विद द सीवियरिटी ऑफ टी बी आई विच विल बी कंसिडर्ड बाय जी सी एस स्केल देन द इट विल डिपेंड ऑन हाउ वट काइंड ऑफ इंजरी इट इज वेदर इट इज अ ओपन इंजरी और अ क्लोज इंजरी और ओपन वूड और अ क्लोज वूड देन कमिंग अप टू द इम्पैक्ट वेदर इट इज ऑफ हाई वेलोसिटी और ऑफ लो वेलोसिटी देन वील मेजर द डिसेबिलिटी ऑफ द पेशेंट एसोसिएटेड विद इंजरी हाउ वी कैन मेजर द डिसेबिलिटी थ्रू क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ क्वेश्चन एयर और फंक्शनल इंडिपेंडेंस मेजर एंड देन वील लुक फॉर द लोकेशन ऑफ इंजरी बेसिकली वन कॉमन रूल फॉर द क्लिनिशियन और फिजियोथेरापिस्ट वी मस्ट से इज वी शुड बी पेशेंट वेल डीलिंग अ पेशेंट विथ अ ट्रॉमेटिक ब्रेन इंजरी now coming up to the classification of traumatic brain injury it is divided into four parts the commonest classification is divided into four parts first of all which contains localized brain injury which is at the site of impact okay second one is coop counter coop mechanism that is the bouncing back of brain basically injury at the site of impact and just opposite to the site of impact third one is polar brain damage that is the injury which is occurring because of deacceleration and fourth one is diffuse axonal injury that is the most common injury basically shearing and retraction of the neurons which is leading to the separation of cytone from the axon then coming up to the most common areas of diffuse axonal injury the commonest injuries that are found in corpus callosum in basal ganglia in brain stem in cortical white matter and the cerebellum which will basically lead to coma bp autonomic disturbances dilatation of the pupil uh, impaired posture like decerebrate or decorticate then there are secondary injuries that are associated with the primary causes of traumatic brain injury that can be the injury must be causing hypoxia to the region which can cause ischemic injury there can be infection there can be herniation causing the increase in intracranial pressure there can be intracranial hemorrhage there can be increased intracranial pressure or cns obstruction there can be vasospasm of the cerebral arteries what are the common scales that can be used to uh, measure the amount of injury that is gcs scale rls scale goat index or the root cause disability index now i will directly come to the impairments what are the common impairments associated with traumatic brain injury first coming up to the direct impairments direct impairments will include your postural abnormalities abnormalities of tone abnormal sensation your ambulation will be impaired balance will be impaired paresis or plegia both can be there dyssynergia will be there motor learning motor control will be impaired timing sequencing coordination every kind of cognitive problem you can find in patient with cognitive uh, traumatic brain injury and in patient with traumatic brain injury distractibility is very common now coming up to the cognitive problems how we are going to measure cognitive problems first of all we will look for the altered level of consciousness how through the gcs scale as i have told you earlier most probably in the acute phase of traumatic brain injury the patient will be fine in a vegetative state what is vegetative state vegetative state is kind of comatose state where patient is unable to respond there will be no motor response or minimal motor response or no verbal response or minimal verbal response along with even a patient can be found with only a eye blinking present in the patient then it is uh, vegetative state is also considered as the minimal conscious state then coming up to the second part of cognitive functioning that is 
orientation and the memory deficit basically the explicit memory will be lost for the patient what is the difference between the explicit and the uh, implicit and the explicit learning basically impl implicit learning consists of the recognition common activities like cycling swimming walking and the explicit explicit learning includes the concentration set of learning recognition of relatives so the explicit learning will be lost in case of tbi or will be impaired judgment will be affected rational thinking will be affected there will be behavioral problems like balance dysregulation frustration emotional dysregulation patient will be very aggressive patient will be having sexual disinhibition now coming up to the uh, communication problems what are the common communication problems there will be aphasias there will be dysarthrias there will be language problems <coughs> then other than higher mental functioning there will be problem with visual and the perceptual things like there can be complete blindness or there can be dysarthria right left discrimination will be different then proper agnosia will be there what is proper agnosia proper agnosia is won't be able to recognize the faces so now coming up to the rancho's loss amigo scale this is to measure the level of cognitive functioning basically this is divided into eight stages first stage consists of no response second stage generalized response third stage localized response patient will respond in a localized manner but still patient can be unconscious in this stage in stage 4 patient is conscious that is confused agitated patient will be very aggressive patient will be having a ego problem will not cooperate with you then fifth stage is confused inappropriate sixth stage is confused appropriate seventh is automatic appropriate and eighth one is purposeful appropriate other impairment direct impairment we can say which includes swallowing problems dysphagia and along with that indirect multiple indirect uh, impairments can be there associated with the direct impairments indirect impairments can be because of prolonged immobilization or the prolonged bedridden stay of the patient though indirect uh, will include soft tissue contractures skin breakdowns pressure sores <coughs> development of deep vein thrombosis your osteoporosis basically muscle atrophy associated with prolonged bed rest decreased endurance infections cardiopulmonary problems like uh, more prone these poor patients due to prolonged bed bed rest can be uh, mostly common uh, conditions pneumonia like conditions can occur chest problems can occur now coming up to the pt assessment and management of stage 1 2 and 3 in patient with traumatic brain injury the assessment and the management in physiotherapy department will design according to the rating of the rls scale only so first we'll look of for the pt assessment and management of stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 of rla scale the assessment will include the critical information whether the uh, whether, whether after the injury there was there any open wound or the injury was a closed wound injury then we'll look for the vital signs of the patient then look for the medical status of the patient what is the status of vitals bp heart rate respiratory rate then look for the contraindications posture whether it is decorticate or decerebrate attention span of the patient movement most important will go for tone assessment whether the patient is having hypertonicity or hypotonicity that will be classified on the tone assessment scale now what will be the common goals for this patient first of all the goal is to make the patient attentive secondly what we have to do is we have to reduce the risk of secondary complications or secondary impairments associated with the direct impairments so for that positioning is very important for common conditions or deformities like foot drop multipodal boots can be used to prevent neck contracture neck should be in proper appropriate position prevent abnormal neck reflexes like atnr stnr or exaggeration of dtrs this or tonic reflexes now trunk should be normally aligned wedges should be placed between the fingers to prevent adduction contracture use of splint to prevent flexion contractures and lower limb in lower limb hip and knee should be slightly flexed to prevent the higher tendency of the lower limb to underwent extension contractures 
coming up to the respiratory functioning we have to maintain the respiratory hygiene chest hygiene we have to take care of the uh, chest so that no excessive secretions will be accumulated there inside the chest so what we can do is we can go for breathing exercises if the patient is conscious if the patient is unconscious we can add on with percussion mechanical vibration suctioning and other exercises pnf pattern of for respiration can also be included for respiratory management of these kind of patients then coma stimulation techniques are there these techniques are used to make the patient most attentive and that are performed in the day or evening when the patient responds quite well than the other time of the day what kind of techniques or coma stimulation stimulus can be used or the stimulus can be auditory visual gustatory olfactory tactile kinesthesia or the vestibular stimulus and even note down the small responses that the patient gives whether it is eye response eye blinking or any verbal command in a localized or a generalized manner then coming up to the education and the families this is the most important part that we need to educate the patient caregivers and the family that the patient with traumatic brain injury takes time to recover so they have to be patient they have to cooperate with the medical team as well as the physiotherapy staff so they should also know the appropriate positioning how they can position the patient how to meet the patient one more rule i would like to tell you is same therapist should be there at the same time same place for the with the fixed schedule so that patient won't feel uncomfortable with the therapist now coming up to the physiotherapy assessment and management of rla stage 4 that is the confused agitated stage now the assessment will move more towards the movement part cognitive part as compared to the attention earlier we were go, searching for assessment and management of stimulation to make the patient attentive now patient is already attentive so we have to work for we have to assess for cognitive ability for balance for gait for mobility for tone assessment reflexes strength sensation range of motion for all these thing we have to look for the patient now what are the interventions to uh, treat the assess things these are behavioral therapy what i we need to do is we have to add on the creativity and to reduce the distractibility of the patient prevent agitated outburst because in this stage the patient is very egocentric so we should ask the patient that which color of theraband is of his choice so that we can go for moments like that okay we can make the patient more comfortable in the surrounding we should not change the patient surrounding so frequently then coming up to the treatment assessment and treatment of rla stage 5 and 6 now the assessment part will again move more forward towards the cranial nerve integrity joint mobility assessment of adls sensory examination will be included gait patterns and motor control examination basically it will move towards more functional part of the patient and will look for the management according to that only now coming up to the management in stage 5 and 6 that is a confused uh, inappropriate and confused appropriate the part, uh, first the approach will be decided whether we have to go for compensatory approach or the remedial approach then extrinsic feedback can be given to the patient the approach will be more task oriented balance training will get started in this phase so that we can use wobble boards legs uh, legs standing with less base of support that includes in frankel exercises and other exercises we can use locomotion training gait training constant induced movement therapy can be induced that is the inhibition of one part of the body to induce the movement in other part of the body mat activities or developmental sequence patterns can be incorporated in this stage that is will be from prone prone to prone on elbows prone on hands quadruped then making the patient coming into bridging then kneeling long sitting half kneeling then modified plantigrade and finally the standing position basically we have to improve the patient's trunk control upper trunk control neck control head control and the lower limb control now coming up to the manage, assessment and management of rla 7 and 8 basically now patient do not need that much of external support now we can reduce the external support we have to make the, the patient independent we have to work on the adls of the patient to make the adls easy for the patient we have to work for the cognitive training we have to work for the patient's decision making we have to 
make the patient integrated with the work as well as the environment at home <coughs> now what treatment will include it will include the group therapy sessions level of sus suspension should be more patient should be left with uh, decisions to make by them only and will motivate the patient to have attend family gatherings together to go to office to do simple works to from simple to complex work will shift the patient and further rehabilitation will be supported by a speech therapist and the occupational therapist for fine movements and the language problems associated with traumatic brain injury thank you